Now, the thing to understand is that we live in a society right now where most people are operating in their sympathetic nervous system. I don't want to say all of the time, but a majority of their time, you get a stressful work email, your kids are screaming because they're, you know, hungry, or there's a tantrum, or, you know, you, you log on to Instagram or Facebook, and you see a world event that happens, like we are constantly bombarded with stress. What if there are things we never had the opportunity to learn? We've all been to school or training, but there are things they never taught us that actually make a powerful difference in life. I'm here to share with you all the pieces you've been missing, mindset, health, success, and more, and we'll all learn together from guests along the way. We may not have learned it the traditional way, but oh my goodness, let's keep learning how to do things differently. OMG, my friend. Welcome to this week's episode. So I feel like we often hear buzzwords thrown around and people talk about feeling safe and being aligned and feeling authentic with what we're doing. I just feel like these are things that we hear a lot. And then maybe we wonder, maybe you don't wonder, but I think some of us wonder, is that really powerful? Is that really important? Or is it just kind of the latest thing that we're talking about? So what does this feeling safe mean? And is it really important? And so digging into that, I have brought in a guest to talk to us today about safety and about our nervous system and about all the ways that that really is powerful and impactful. And so Maggie is joining us today on the podcast. She is a homeschool mom of four kids and a mindset and movement coach for moms. And she does this through a group program called Strong as a Mother. And I love that name. (laughs) She is certified in supporting pregnant, postpartum, perimenopause, and menopause, and passionate about supporting these women through movement, mindset, and macros. And she loves spending time outdoors hates cleaning. Yes, absolutely agree with that. And is obsessed with humpback whales. So that's a cool little fun fact. Welcome, Maggie. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. I am so excited that you're here. And we connected online through something completely different and unrelated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you so gotta love the internet. <laughs> that's the power of the internet. Absolutely right. <laughs> So, okay, let's just dive in because I really am very interested in what you're going to say about this topic today because I just really only, I feel like I know the tip of the iceberg. So what I always like to start with is kind of your story because I think that's a powerful thing. So how did you, how did you end up with what you're doing now, coaching women? And in particular, how did you get interested in women's health and the nervous system? Yeah. So it all started uh, almost seven. I mean, what? so when I first had my first son, so he's eight, eight years ago, um, I got into nutrition and um, I wanted to lose the baby weight, right? Um, you have a baby, you put on all this weight. And I was like, oh my gosh, I don't recognize myself. And I just wasn't happy. And I wanted to release the weight. And then I got pregnant again and just, it happened. I had four kids in a little over four years. And through those, through those, four years, like I dug really into mindset and kind of like energy and manifesting kind of like all those things out there. And throughout my journey into motherhood, I ended up creating a company that helped support moms and we would meet on zoom and it was a really powerful community. But one of the biggest things that came out of it was that women weren't taking care of themselves and they didn't feel safe to do so. And this kind of, along with my own personal journey, like spurred something in me that I was like, okay, I want to figure this out. I want to understand why society, you know, says a good mom, you know, puts her kids first, her spouse first, everybody else first. But then you feel like crap and I don't want to feel like crap every day. Yeah, right. And then on the flip side, after I had my my last daughter, 
I was really unhappy in my body. And when she was about 18 months old, I just like didn't like the way that I that I looked and I, I was I tried every, you know, kind of diet or thing out there. And I just wasn't getting where I wanted to go. And it all started with my mindset of me writing affirmations in a notebook that said, I'm so grateful for my healthy, lean, toned and strong body. And I literally wrote that affirmation daily, along with a bunch of others for for like years. And I was I knew that I was conditioning my mind to like believe that and think that and and sit with that and feel that that could be true for me. And then from that, it, I developed a habit of, okay, I can commit to 20 minutes of moving my body every day. It doesn't have to be, you know, hard or strenuous or like so obnoxious sequence. Like it could be a walk. It could be stretching. It could be jumping on our bike and cycling. And so it just stemmed from there. And then people were asking me, what are you doing? How did you do this? And then Strong as a Mother was born. And I was like, okay, this is something that women and moms really need. Uh, And it's so as I've dove in in this last six months where I've gotten all these certifications, there's been nothing more glaringly obvious that we need to understand our nervous systems and how to keep our bodies calm. But then we also need to understand how to move and nourish our bodies so that they feel good as long as possible, like as long as we are alive. We don't have to get weak and frail. That's a choice. And it's a choice made by your decisions and your habits and the safety within your body to really put yourself first and take care of yourself. My brain is going in so many directions with everything (laughs) that you just said. So we got a lot to talk about here. (laughs) So I, I love your story, first of all. And I think a lot of times what we end up being so successful at in life comes out of things that we really needed to solve for ourselves or for our families or for someone we really cared about. And that's where the passion comes from. And clearly that was the case for you. And I've seen your before and after pictures. So I know that you have had a really powerful story. So a couple of things resonated with me that you said, and we're going to dive into the nervous system thing for sure, because I think a lot of times people don't know what we're talking about when we say things like that. But I, I have a family member who is dealing with Parkinson's disease right now. And what you said about movement really, really struck me because I've alluded to this before in other episodes, but Watching that has made me realize I must stay as fit as I can, because Mm -hmm. when we stop, it gets even harder. And I know that I'm older than you and my kids are older than yours, but it's such a, it's such a quality of life thing. And unfortunately, if we realize that 20 years too late, it's really hard to come back from that. So that just really impacted me a lot when you said that. Yeah. I mean, and the thing that's becoming that, and like, I I obviously follow accounts that kind of see my point of view and like not necessarily agree with me, but they kind of speak that in is especially for women, um, as we go through perimenopause and menopause and our hormones are all over, our our increased risk of cardiovascular disease and our increased risk of um, breast cancer and ovarian cancer significantly increase because of our hormones that fluctuate and eventually like dwindle down. And what they have found and what science has found is that if you move your body and you like do mindset work or keep your body calm, you significantly decrease your chance or your risk of getting, you know, the top three killers or top two killers of, um, of women. And Mm. I just don't think that's told. I don't think women know. And I'm just like, "Ah, I need to help all the women. (laughs) Yes. But oh my goodness. And obviously we're not saying that this is a preventative. No. And that's not what you're saying that we can prevent cancer or anything, but good heavens to reduce the risk for Mm -hmm. something that doesn't necessarily have to cost anything and it's just habits that we can create. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. So you've said calm a couple of times. And so I want to dig into this statement that I know my listeners have heard where we're talking about taking care of our nervous system and making sure we feel calm and we feel safe. But can you kind of explain more of what that means? Yeah. So in the group program that I run, Strong as a Mother, I get women that into the program. I open it like every six to eight weeks and I get women that are so excited and they're they're ready to do it and they join. And then by, you know, week one, they've got like the, the high still going. And by week two, they're like, oh, and by week three, um, sometimes they drop off. And the first couple of times I had ran it, I was like, why is this happening? What is going on? And I was like, oh my goodness their bodies don't feel safe. 
And the thing is, and as I, I, when I was thinking about prepping for this podcast today, I was trying to think of this situation. And so I'm going to kind of like tell a story to h- try and help you under, excuse me, to help understand and explain the nervous system. So when you were a little girl, let's pretend that your mom just kind of, she really didn't like exercise and she felt like exercising was punishment and it was to burn off, you know, the cake that she ate. You heard that a lot growing up. And the thing about our minds is that our subconscious beliefs and our subconscious kind of what we believe to be true is formed by the age of seven. And so the things that our parents believed and the things that our parents said to us have a huge impact on what we believe to be true and possible for us as we move into adulthood, unless we are able to understand the mind and kind of rewrite those neural pathways. So you have this mom and she's told you that moving her, moving your body is, is, you know, kind of painful and punishment and whatever. So you go through life and in your thirties, you've had some kids and you aren't necessarily like in love with your body. And so you want, you want to move your body. You want to start working out. I call it movement because working out can kind of be like a trigger word for some women. And I, one of my best friends, Heidi, we talk about joyfully moving our body. Like it's not punishment. It's not work. It's like actually like loving our bodies through movement. And so I use the word movement, but you can replace it with workout or whatever. And so you're in your thirties, you want to start working out and maybe you join the gym and you go for two weeks and then your mind starts to say like, you know what? But this isn't working. I'm not seeing results. This isn't happening. Oh, you know what? I need to clean the kitchen. I've got all these other things to do. And you put that on the back burner. And that is because on a subconscious level, your body, your nervous system does not feel safe to work out. And it doesn't feel safe to work out because it's running on an old, kind of like an old, if you think of like a thermostat, it's running on like an old program of that working out is punishment and your body on a subconscious level, it doesn't want to be punished. It doesn't want to feel pain. It doesn't want to like be in trouble or um, get hurt. And so the primitive part of our brain, which is what our nervous system kind of like stems from, and I'll, I'll mention, I'll kind of like explain the nervous system in just a second, but I kind of want to finish my story so you kind of Perfect. can understand. So your brain on a subconscious level is, is really just trying to keep you safe, right? It doesn't want to be punished. It doesn't want to be in pain. And so it's helping create the stories and it's helping create these, these kind of um, invisible blocks that stop you from moving past that kind of, you know, story or belief and actually doing the thing that you know, in your heart you want to do, but your brain and your body want to keep you safe. So yes, I, (laughs) let me just say, yes, I fully agree. And it's interesting because I've had a couple of different guests on the podcast who've talked about this idea of the subconscious. And I, from my mindset training also, am quite familiar. And I also don't think people realize enough that there's a lot going on that Mm -hmm. we don't even consciously recognize. And it's that programming that sits in there. Yeah. Yep. I mean, and it's so, it's so powerful. Like, like our, like our brains and our bodies are so connected. Like for example, my mom growing up, my grandma at one point, you know, put her hand between her legs and was like, Oh, it's so good that you have that gap between your thighs. And to this day, Um, my mom's thighs have never touched. It doesn't matter. Like she can, she can, add weight anywhere, but her legs will never gain. Her legs have never touched. And I know for a fact, it's just because her body will not let her gain weight on her legs. Like it it, it sounds crazy to me, but when she told me that story, I was like, oh, that is why, that is why your legs are always like these little chicken legs. Um, but it just goes to show you that the things that we're told as kids has a huge impact on your body and what your how your body responds and reacts and kind of allows what it allows to come into your life. Wow. And you know, as we're sitting here, so my daughter is 21 and I know that she listens to this podcast. So I'm I'm thinking as she's listening to this, is she wondering what did I say to her when she was fewer years than seven years old. And I don't remember. And I do wonder, I joke with my kids that, you know, we're all human. And so I'm sure I'm kind of messing them up in some way or another, but I'm just trying not to, I'm trying to do my best, but that's young. And I'm not sure that I was cognizant of all of this when they were that young. No, I mean, I have, I have kids that young and I, my husband, and I still say that our oldest who's eight, I'm like, he's going to need therapy. (laughs) <laughs> like it doesn't know it doesn't matter like what you do like you're you can't you just can't we're all human so nobody beat themselves up yeah no for sure yeah 
but it's it's the recognition of this is the first step, I think, for sure. So, okay. So you said we'll talk about the nervous system. So let's go. Yeah. Let's go into that a little bit. So the nervous system is the system in our bodies that, like I said, is designed to keep us safe. So we have the parasympathetic nervous system and the sympathetic nervous system. And the sympathetic nervous system is the system that comes into play when thousands of years ago, there was a saber toothed tiger and it tells your body to either freeze, fight, flee, or fawn is basically, which is freeze, but it basically kind of signals our body that there is a threat and that it surges cortisol in your, in your system. And then um, you kind of have like that reaction. And then your parasympathetic nervous system is your rest and digest. And that's where your calm, your heart rate is slower and your reaction time is less. And it's, it's basically where you're just calm and collected. Now, the thing to understand is that we live in a society right now where most people are operating in their sympathetic nervous system. I don't want to say all of the time, but a majority of their time, you get a stressful work email, your kids are screaming because they're, you know, hungry, or there's a tantrum, or, you know, you, you log on to Instagram or Facebook, and you see a world event that happens, like we are constantly bombarded with um, stress. And from like a physiological level, it's hard on our nervous system, but it also messes up your hormones. I mean, there's like, a, it's like a kind of like a whole cascade waterfall effect of the implicate ramifications to being, to constantly being in your, in your sympathetic nervous system. And if you aren't aware of like the two systems and kind of what they do, you can just constantly stay in there and never really know that, oh my goodness, I need to do some things for myself so that I can switch over to that parasympathetic state and feel really calm and kind of bring myself back down. And maybe it's better decision-making, I'm guessing, when you can bring yourself back down, your brain is not being thrown all these stress hormones and that sort of thing. Yep. Yep. You're able to like use more like logical or rational thinking rather than like reactive and like quick, quick decision making. Right, right. That's powerful. I've had a few experiences lately where people thought I was a lot younger than I actually am. You want to know the secret? Take care of your skin. Wash your face every night. And when you do that, make sure that you're using safe and healthy products and make sure you moisturize. If you want to know my favorite skin care, it's Derm Results Advanced. I use it morning and night. Check it out at www.bit.ly slash OMG skincare and make sure you use the code ARBON10 for 10% off. And I certainly, as soon as you say cortisol, and I'm sure that the listeners are feeling this too, as soon as anyone says cortisol nowadays, we all kind of know, ooh, like that's the stress hormone. Like we don't want too much of that. But it's a powerful thing to think that maybe we're all living in that state a majority of the time. And that's certainly not good in our bodies either. Putting aside even getting healthy and getting fit and all of that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and it's a, it's, it's a huge piece to, to like, to feeling good in your body, but it's also a huge piece when it comes to if your body's even going to allow it to release, if you have stored fat on your body, if it's even going to like allow that to, to be released. So that's a great segue into the next thing that I wanted to ask you about, because I think you explained the nervous system really well. And it, it makes sense that you know, we want to have a lower heart rate, we want to be calm, we want to be able to think straight, we want to be able to digest properly, whether it's mentally or physically. And at the same time, maybe we kind of wonder, well, why does that affect whether I'm able to gain muscle tone or whether I'm able to release weight or any of that? Why would it make a difference? Yeah, I mean, so like I said in the story, so if it if you don't feel safe, you you can't you can't keep going or you you self sabotage, right? So my whole thing is to help women to stop self sabotaging, recognize their limiting beliefs, and then help them reframe them and see their patterns, so that oh my my body's trying to keep my brain and my body are trying to keep me safe right now. Okay, I need to calm my body down and tell myself a new story that hey, working out or moving my body is the most loving thing I can do for it. So that's like one piece to that, right? And then the other piece is that, like you said, cortisol, if you get your cortisol spiked, it is the equivalent to eating a piece, one piece of like a big piece of cake. And then if you aren't able to like process that, right, that goes and gets stored as 
fat in your body that then you're you likely aren't going to want to like have hanging around there. So the first two weeks of the program that I run is all mindset based because you have to, in my opinion, you have to get your mind and your body kind of like regulated and understanding where your thinking is at before you can dive into the nutrition piece and look at food and then look at movement and then kind of like tie it all together as a bow because they are, in my opinion, all so interconnected that you really, in terms of like health and fitness, I don't believe you can focus on one and have sustaining results because all three of them work so intricately together that they're, it's like a, it's like a little triangle that you, the best, the best. The way to honor your body the most, in my opinion, is to understand and align all three of them. I love that. And my my brain got a little stuck. So I'm going to come back to it. When you said that a spike of cortisol is basically equal to eating a piece of cake. And so I, I used to be a math teacher. So I like my little numbers and my equations. So you're saying that the body responds to this spike of cortisol almost in the same way as if you ate this sugary whatever and my brain is saying but it's not the same calories and I I guess that's not the point the point is the way the body is responding to that yeah so my understanding is it spikes your blood sugar like you've eaten a piece of cake and then because the in it's like spikes your insulin and because that isn't getting like used your body stores that and it stores it as fat which again like we aren't women, I, in my opinion, women aren't really taught anything really about, about our bodies or our hormones or our cycles, which I could, that could be like a whole nother thing. And so it's, it's so important to understand that if you're constantly feeling stress and you also really would like to release some stored fat on your body, you got to deal with the stress and you have to learn to start regulating your nervous system so that when you have those cortisol spikes, you're able to come down and um, go into that rest and digest so that it's not continuously storing unwanted fat on your body. That's fascinating. And we all kind of know now that sugar is bad, but again, we maybe don't know why. And so you've just given such a great explanation of that, that blood sugar is spiking, the insulin gets stored as fat. And the fact that just being stressed could cause that, that's Mm -hmm. a big deal. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's fascinating. It's fascinating. I'm just sitting here absorbing. Okay. <laughs> I also caught at the very beginning when you started talking, you and you've said it a couple of times, you said release the weight instead of lose the weight. And that is something that I am aware of because I've spoken to my personal success coach about this a few times, but I want you to tell us a little bit more about why you said it that way. Yeah. So again, it goes to our um, subconscious minds. So if you think about it, losing something is really stressful. It's really annoying and you always want to find it. And so one of the first things that I tell the women in my, in my groups is that switch your language. Your language is really powerful. If you are saying, I really want to lose five pounds, your subconscious mind is going to be like, I, okay, well, but if we lose this, then I want to find it again. So then, I, then I'm going to put that weight back or that, uh, you know, fat back on. And most of the women that are coming to me don't want that. And so I'm like, okay, so then you need to switch your language. We want to release it never to see it again and say, see ya and, and go from there. And, you know, my whole thing is rather than focusing on what you want to lose, I want you to focus on what you could gain, you know, like gaining lean muscle or gaining more energy or gaining, being able to play with your kids longer or like play chase. I just think the more we focus on what we, what we can, what we can get rather than what we want to get rid of again in that whole mindset realm is, is so important. Yeah. It's really fascinating. And there's so many There's so many ways we could take that discussion that we're not going to do today, but just about how we talk to ourselves in our minds and what effect that has. But I I wanted to point that out because I heard you say it and I was kind of like, yes, yes, she said release the weight. So let I wanted to make sure everybody heard that because yeah, when we lose something, it's stressful and we want to find it again. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, and the other, the other, the other thing that I think is super important and hopefully it can help anyone listening is the energy behind need versus get one of the like on our kickoff call for strong as a mother it's one of the first things I talk about is that you are already hot you're already beautiful you're already strong you're already you're already amazing but you get to get stronger you get to you know get sexier like whatever your goal is 
And it's not a need because need, if you think about it, need, it feels really like restrictive and it feels really like, oh, I need that. Like, oh, I have to have it. And it, it gets, it totally clogs the energy of whatever you're doing. And so when you think of get to like, oh my gosh, I get to get up in my body today. Like what a blessing. It totally switches the energy and we're all energetic beings. And so just even switching the need versus get, I think is super powerful when it comes to how women like look at taking care of themselves and, and all of that. I agree. Uh, it kind of makes it instead of being like a the thing that I have to do, a thing that I want to do because I mm-hmm. get to do it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. So my, I feel like you kind of have started giving us answers with that very thing. But my next question was going to be, so if somebody's listening to this and thinking, Ooh, I might be the one she's describing where I'm sitting in that stress state all the time, my nervous yep. system is all riled up. What, what are some things that people can do to start to try to shift this? Yeah. I mean, we want to think that it's complicated, right? But it's really, it doesn't, ha- it doesn't have to be complicated. Giving yourself space to sit quietly and visualize like what, like your dream day or meditating, which I know everyone says, go meditate. And, but honestly, put on some meditative music and let yourself lay on the couch for 10 minutes. EFT tapping is a great way to work through like stored emotions in the body. There's tons of YouTube videos on it. I actually got certified with it. Like, oh my gosh, it'll be how old's Porter? It'll be five years ago. I fully, fully agree. Yeah. yeah, it's great. Anyway, yeah. So like EFT tapping, giving yourself like an ear massage or giving yourself what is uh, like walking outside can decrease your stress significantly, getting your feet in the earth. You can put on some music, which I know you're creating a playlist, like getting moving your body, like moving your body, like strength training to me is that's like one of my biggest nervous system regulating tools because heavy work. Um, In my former life, I was a special ed teacher and we would, when kids were having a really hard time, we would actually give them heavy work and make them wear or have them wear uh, heavy backpacks to help them feel like more grounded and more centered. And that's like basically when anytime I pick up my weights, I'm literally just trying to regulate my nervous system. So I feel like centered and grounded and better equipped to homeschool my four kids. (laughs) <laughs> which is a challenge in itself. I yeah. fully, fully agree with that. You know what? That's so interesting that you say that. I have always found that I prefer, I don't work with heavy weights, but I prefer types of exercise that are, what's the word I'm looking for? Resistance. Like more input. Yeah. Yeah. More yeah. input. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I, I just figured that's what I prefer. Who knows why I never thought about it, but how interesting that it maybe is grounding or calming. Yeah. Uh, I mean, a hundred percent. And so it really is just creating kind of like a toolkit on your phone of things that you can do. Okay. I have five minutes. Okay. I can play some meditation music and, you know, just sit for a second. And like it for, for somebody who's a perfectionist, like my kids interrupt me every single time that I'm trying to regulate my nervous system. And instead of letting it be something that, you know, makes my nervous system go out of whack again, and I get, you know, frustrated instead, I'm like, okay, great. They get to watch me help me and help me regulate my nervous system. So, okay, do you want to sit with me while I meditate? Do you want to tap too? Do you want to um, go for a walk outside with me? Do you want to go barefoot on the grass with me for a little bit? Do you want to lift weights with me? Like I, I invite my kids to kind of like do watch me or do the things that I'm doing, because I know that if it's helping me uh, help, you know, calm my body down, it can also have that effect for them and then give them those kinds of ideas when they feel frustrated. That's a great point. And I think this comes up a lot when people talk about meditation, because our brains are always going and we feel like we're doing it wrong, right? If we can't Mm -hmm. like just sit there and think of nothing because our brains are this and I didn't do that, blah, 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 blah. And then we stop because we are just feeling bad. Mm -hmm. So if I kind of expand what you're saying, you're saying, just try to sit there calmly anyway. And it's okay if your brain's going wacky, just try again. Yeah. I mean, I, I honestly, I rarely am able to get into a meditative state, but I know that like just get, give it, getting into the action and like give, giving the energy towards it is going to help me. And I always feel calmer, after, even if it's just like playing some um, relaxing music or like a, I would use, I use insight timer, just like a 10 minute, you know, chakra meditation. I feel better after. So then I know it's working, right? Sometimes I think it's just, it's just sitting there and doing it rather than thinking that it has to be perfect. Yeah. 
That's interesting. And, and yeah, the whole being perfect thing is probably just we're shooting ourselves in the foot because all of these things are good until we maybe take it too far and criticize ourselves out of doing it. Right. Yep. Yep. I mean, and then you're, it's basically like that self-sabotage loop, right? Like, well, I can't get it perfect. So I shouldn't do it. So then I'll stay in that space. I'm, and it's just your brain's way of trying to keep you safe. Yeah. Yeah. So let me see if I can kind of sum this up. Basically, because of sort of the way our brains are working and how we were affected when we were young and kind of the way we were programmed, for lack of a better word, not that we're robots, but the way we were programmed when we were young, we're almost self-sabotaging ourselves from being able to get healthy, whether it's weight loss or getting fit or just kind of living healthy sometimes because we're staying in this stress state and it's kind of we're we're at odds with our own self I guess is what we're saying yeah basically your subconscious is set your subconscious nervous system I don't I mean I'm kind of making that up but it's essentially like your subconscious nervous system is set to a certain standard and you want a different standard but it's not going to let you go to that new standard until you slowly turn the dial to feel safe to get to that new standard. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? It's interesting because I did an episode not too long ago with Jen Liss, who we, she's also very much about mindset. And we were talking about using fun to overcome fear and doubt. And we were Mm -hmm. talking more about it with success and job and all of that sort of thing. But now I'm just putting everything together. It's really the same thing. We yeah. were we were talking about allowing ourselves to gradually shift and enjoy more things and kind of raise the thermostat setting on what we are comfortable with. And you're really saying the same thing affects our health. Yeah, yep, exactly. Fascinating. Okay, well, you heard the list, everybody. These are things we can do. And it's quite a list, but I would say even picking one or two, right, is going yeah. to make a difference. For sure. Yeah, one or two and just giving yourself the space to do it or even just the awareness of like, okay, I'm feeling really st- stressed right now and kind of honoring that feeling and then okay, what feel what would feel good right now and like a hot so if you're worried about cortisol once your body releases oxytocin it stops immediately releasing um cortisol so oxytocin is like the is the queen i like king or queen but it's like the king hormone in our bodies and so that's laughing that's a hug that is um getting cuddles from your dog or pet you know like petting your dog and so as soon as you can get into an activity that is oxytocin inducing you stop the production of cortisol. So just having that list of what are things that feel good? What are things that help me feel calm? What are things that help me feel energized? And then creating space in your day to plan them in or to be open to exploring them in your day. I love it. I love it. And exploring them in a non-perfectionist way to actually enjoy them. (laughs) Yes. It's not a have to, it's a get to. I love, yes. I'm going to be saying that to myself. It's not a have to. (laughs) get to. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. So you have your program strong as a mother and we will share your what we, I will share your website in the show notes so that people can go and check that out and your Instagram as well. Do you have any other resources or information that you might recommend? Yeah. You know, there's, I know that there's a ton of nervous system people on Instagram. I don't actually follow a ton. The one that I do follow is Jessica McGuire. She talks a lot about the nervous system and the vagus nerve. And in all transparency, I have her vagus nerve course and I'm like halfway through it, but it was like two years ago and I just, I haven't finished it. It, it, But like, I find it fascinating, right? Because the vagus nerve is connected to the nervous system and the vagus and it runs from your brain to your gut. And so like, oh, yeah, I could I could geek out on all that stuff. So yeah, it's just, it's so fascinating yeah. to me. Yeah, it, well, me too. And I did an episode on gut health where we kind of put a pin in the whole thing because she said, okay, now we have to talk about a whole nother episode about stress and how all of this is connected. So you're saying exactly what she was saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's so fascinating. Perfect. I will make sure that I give her Instagram as well as yours. You know what? I I know that people are going to find this interesting because we self-sabotage so much when we Mm -hmm. try to make changes in life. And 
we then sometimes maybe we look at people who are able to do it. Because I've seen I've seen your transformation, and then we tell ourselves, "Well, that's her. Like I can't do that." And yeah. maybe it's all coming still from that same place of not believing. Yeah, I mean, I just did a post, an Instagram post, a couple of days ago about like stories that keep you stuck, and one of them is it works for her and it won't work for me. I mean, it's like it's like a classic. It's a classic thing, and. The thing I said in there is that you don't feel safe to change. And what if instead of looking at that person as, oh, it works for her, it won't work for me. What if instead you chose the belief of, oh my gosh, she's proof that I can do it too. Mm -hmm. And then you step into that energy. And then anytime you have that limiting belief come up, you have your alternate belief because you have to rewire those neural pathways in your brain to then slow. Like I just, like I said at the beginning of the episode where I was writing, I love my healthy, lean, toned, strong body every day. You guys like, I'm not not kidding I wrote it down and like visualize like what I wanted to look like and like how would I feel and knowing that if you have that alternate belief ready to go when you have the limiting belief you can be like okay nope she's just proof I can do it too or she's just proof that it's coming to me or she's you know she's just the proof that it's possible and so yeah it's just learning to shift your beliefs and keep your body feeling safe while doing it And you know what, we always say how we shouldn't compare ourselves to other people. And I guess this is why this is exactly (laughs) why, because we're going to tell ourselves stories about how we can't be them, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, like a mini mic drop right there. Comparison is a big thing in the world of social media or in the age of social media. Yeah, Yeah. okay. So I'm going to be like processing all of this for quite some time. And I know the listeners will as well. So let me ask you my last question, which is the one I ask everybody. And you mentioned it. So I have had a ball making this playlist of songs that just all different people use to put ourselves in a better mood. And we might say raise our vibration. We might say just feel happier, whatever. And so tell me what your pick is. No, okay, so this was really hard because I actually have very eclectic taste in music. And my my favorite band is actually a very heavy metal band. And I don't feel like <laughs> that is the vibe you're going for. And then I listen to kids music and Disney um, because of my kids. So I, this was really hard. I'm going to say Baby Gets Her Lovin' by Tyler Hubbard. Okay, that's a new one. I love yeah. it when song it was kind of like the vibe this summer I don't know it was just like a fun it's like a fun country song that Tyler Hubbard wrote so okay awesome I will add it and you know what I feel like this is a playlist of all different people with all different tastes and quite frankly if you're listening to the playlist and you don't like one of the songs then skip it you know like whatever but now you're gonna have to tell me what the heavy metal band is that you really love so it's um five finger death punch I mean I can give you I can give you my favorite song from them I I've got a ton Okay, well, give me one because I'm going to go check it out. We'll um, okay, let's see. My first one, my first favorite one was, I th- I'll say The Pride. Okay, I, I will go check it out. You never know. I know. I mean, yeah, I have I have a lot of them. But that's what I listen to when I lift. I love it. it keeps me motivated. Yeah, and there's, there's definitely, I think some people tend toward the lyrics with music and some people tend toward just the beat the sound yep. there's yep. something to that for sure yep and I think that's actually why I like them so much because I love their lyrics are very clever and then the beat is high and so I, I get like a little bit of both um, yeah. they do swear so if you don't like swearing don't listen to them but yeah well I'm fascinated two songs that I didn't know going to check them out and at least one of them will go on the playlist <laughs> yeah, right. okay well this personally has been really fascinating for me and has really kind of put together pieces that I've learned from other guests on the podcast as well, which I love it when that happens, because it really means all of us are in alignment when we're trying to figure out how to make changes in our life, how to do positive things for ourselves and not let our own self-sabotage get in the way. Yeah. So I really appreciate it because I think this is going to help a lot of people for sure. Yeah, I hope. I mean, I'm all about helping women feel good in their bodies, inside and out of their bodies, right? Because you got to get the mind right and the body. Yeah. And uh, many, many, many years ago, when I was trying to lose weight, my sister said to me, well, the first thing you have to do is see yourself having lost the weight. And way back with then, I said, that's ridiculous. That's not the first thing I need to do. And 
come to find out, apparently that was the first thing I needed to do. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. So it all comes back to our self-image and and just kind of appreciating ourselves and living without all the stress. And so I appreciate your tips on that for sure. Thank you for joining me. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. OMG, I would be so honored if you would take a moment, leave a rating, leave a review, or take a screenshot and share on your social media. Let's get this message out further into the world. Now it's time to head down to the show notes to see the resources I mentioned. We may not have learned this before, but it sure is powerful now.